I'm Jenny Russell. Welcome to Her Health and Happiness right here on UK Health Radio, your only real feel-good radio station and the number one health station, all things health, available on podcast right here on this platform worldwide. How are you doing? Did you enjoy last week's show? Because that was amazing and I promised you part two is coming up this week. But before we get going, I've got a packed show today. I hope, like me, you to remember that you are blessed and highly favoured a magnet for miracles, the solution to somebody's problem and the answer to someone's prayer. The Her Health and Happiness is a show dedicated to all aspects of feminine, intimate health and the whole person. And I still look at men's health as well. But this week, I was really blessed. I was calling him Doctor, an absolutely beautiful man I spoke to today. But it's actually Professor Muir Gray. Professor Muir Gray He's one of the founders of Gold Star Health Service. It's a GHS. So what's happened is doctors, psychologists and medical experts have launched a pioneering new service to help the over 50s take control of their health. And I'm going to start the show with that. because It was such a wonderful interview this morning. And it really is about a, a service that provides self-care knowledge and activities to enhance health and reduce unnecessary prescriptions. So looking at how... We can help ourselves. And honestly, we had a candid and wonderful interview this morning. And so I want to go straight in with that. But just before we do that, I just want to ask you, how has your week been? What has worked well for you in this week? What one thing, even in terms of your intimate health, could you change? Yesterday, I was blessed. I I spoke. I did a 10, 15 minute presentation and a menopause awareness event that runs once a month in a beautiful grade two listed building in Southgate. It was absolutely amazing. And I have to say it was absolutely packed and I was so well received. I was humbled. That one event allowed me to sell a good handful of both of my books, but it also allowed me to bring women in and and they had access to The knowledge that I have that they didn't know was there. This is what this gold star wants to also do. So my free three-day challenge, the new one starts this Monday. If you want to get on, then you can email me, pelvicsecrets at iCloud.com. You can find me on Instagram, especially on Instagram, more so than Twitter, at Pelvic Secrets. You can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook, Jenny Russell. Remember, it's Jennifer minus the F-E-R. So it's no E of there, it's just J-E-N-N-I. And you'll find me... And I was able to share, you know, my little menopause, menopause. Okay, you've moved in, but please don't overheat my skin. Don't cause me headaches or worse still brain fog. Don't make me struggle to focus and do well in my job. Don't make me want to go to the bathroom at the most inopportune times. Oh, I think my intimacy, so I just want to cry. Menopause, menopause. Okay, you've got my attention. Oh, you want me to make nutritional lifestyle interventions. It was never your intention to debilitate me. So how do we work together for the best life to be? That was my little menopause intro yesterday. Now, I'm going to play a trail. Then I'm going to play the interview I did with Professor Muir Gray. I called him doctor, but I want to apologise. Absolutely wonderful man. Have a listen. Another trail. Listen to part two with Dr. Kelly Sudakis and myself. Really, when I listen to it, I feel bad because my verbal diarrhea is bad. Anyway, I apologise in advance, but I know you're going to enjoy it because the knowledge that was shared between all of us is definitely something that can make a difference to your life. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Good. The station that makes you feel good. Are you a person like myself? Because I'm a person of age, sassy, sexy, 60. Are you a person of age? And finding that you need to start to really think more about your health in older age. This is Jenny here from UK Health Radio. And today I'm blessed to be speaking with Dr. Gray Muir. And we're speaking about, Muir Gray, I'm sorry. And we are, we're speaking about doctors and psychologists and medical experts launching a pioneering new service to put the over 50s in control of their health. So Dr. Gray, welcome to Her Health and Happiness. 
Thank you very much. It's very good to meet you. And it's my I'm really speaking to your parents and your grandparents and thinking of the generations ahead. Mm. But what we've discovered is the elixir of life in Oxford, and it's called knowledge. And the knowledge has to be given you in a way that uh, you can adopt and support and use. But we now know that most of what happens to us after the age of, well, really 30, is not the aging process. But three other things happen. One is lots of fitness. And fitness becomes ev even more important every decade. And that occurs not because we're lazy or lifestyle, because of the modern environment. The car, the computer, the desk job, and everywhere we look, lots of calories. We're genetically not developed for that sort of environment. It's an environmental problem. Secondly, there's disease. And disease gets more common the longer you live. And I'm 79 and I've got four long-term conditions. And this is not because of aging either. It's because of the environment we live in. You need a bit of luck to avoid Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. But the modern epidemics are, again, environmental. And, but we can, we can fight back against the modern environment. Mm. And the problem also with disease is very often that loss of fitness is accelerated. The fitness gap between how able you are and how able you could be gets wider, not because of disease, but because your well-meaning family starts doing things for you. Oh, I don't want to see mum struggling to the shops. I'll send in Ocado. That's a wrong thing to do. So aging is not a major problem to the late 90s. Fitness loss starts for almost everybody in their early 20s. Disease comes on, complicated by accelerated loss of fitness. And the fourth factor are social factors. Deprivation affects too many people. And ageism affects everybody. Negative thinking. So we decided we would develop a new health service because the NHS is just not delivering knowledge to people over 50. And we've got research to show that. You know, you've made some really, really great points. I'm going to just pick them all apart. So I'm in this field as well, right? And it's really interesting because holistic healthcare has been around for a long time, but a lot of doctors and medical professionals have just acted like it doesn't exist. It's on the other side. So we have talked about this for ages. We call this nutrition and lifestyle factors. It's just lifestyle factors. And it's interesting because I'm actually at my mum's house at the moment. Yes. I'm one of four girls and we look after my mum who has Alzheimer's is now bed bound. But she had six of us back to back and she never learned to drive. So nope. she walked everywhere. She walked yes. to work. She walked to the shop. She carried her stuff. So she was weight training all the time because she was carrying those shopping bags mm. all the time. And so that, again, that improved her posture, that kept her core strong, that kept her muscles strong, that kept her moving, it kept her active. So that's that's number one that you mentioned there. But, you know, we are the children I drive, but I, I play tennis. I'm, I'm all in all things fitness. But my brothers and sisters are not the same. So what we do is we look at our parents and think, well, they might have walked everywhere. I'm not going to walk. I'm going to get a car and I'm going to drive. And we don't realize that they're the ones that kept themselves fit. And we're the ones that are doing the opposite by having the luxury of driving, parking as close as we can to the supermarket, using mm -hmm, the yes. food, carrying nothing. So we are the ones who are losing out on the fitness because we because of the convenience of modern living they're the ones who are still using the buses and the trains are still pushing and carrying so that's number one number two you're right ageism people have this whole thought whereby you know you look at remember when i was young my mum was like 50 oh my god you're old but now you know because I, I turned 60 last november i don't consider myself as an old person no so I, I say to myself i'm sassy sexy 60 not just 60 i'm still full of vitality i still play tennis i still cycle i still run i can jump on a trampoline and do all those crazy things but I'm an exception as opposed to the norm and that's the issue as well because people have this this notion still that once you get to a certain age everything's going to fall apart you're supposed to sit down you're not supposed to move and your children are supposed to move in and do everything for you and that's the reason why I think many of us are struggling and as you mentioned as well the third one the nutrition the nutrition is uh is seriously lacking yeah. Yeah, you see, the 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 health. We have to think about the health service and the role that we want the health service to play. Mm. And I've been in the NHS fifty years, and I think it's a wonderful organisation. But the NHS should really concentrate on diagnosis, 
acute care and starting the right treatment. So I had a heart attack 11 years ago and I was very well cared for, diagnosis with MRI, stent in. And then I had two months of really good training in a local gym. Mm -hmm. But in the 11 years since I've had my heart attack, I've had a thousand boxes of pills. I take six pills a day. And I have not one word from the NHS about diet or exercise or how I'm feeling. Which is crazy. I've had, I've had letters galore telling me where to park and come to the clinic and where my next appointment is. But the NHS is just not able to deliver. And what you see if you if you read the people who work in primary care, they're overwhelmed already. Mm -hmm. uh, the computer screen is sending up apps and reminders. And people say to us, well, it's a digital service you're developing. What about digital exclusion? Our response to that is that uh, people who are not digitally excluded, people who use Amazon and email, people like me and you, mm -hmm. we should be given the knowledge and told, and boys and girls, it's up to you. Self-care is the most important type of health care for the prevention of disease and for the management of long-term conditions. Once the NHS has diagnosed Parkinson's or cancer or, and they've given you a start of the right treatment, it's what you do for yourself, supported by other people like you, that is the most important type of health care. Uh, so we'll never have enough money or enough people to have doctors and nurses and primary care teams seeing everybody. But if the people who are digital already, if we can help them, because at the moment, less than a quarter get anything other than pills if they've got, for example, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Then the primary care teams can focus on the people who are not online, who are very often the people who are most deprived and have multiple problems. So digital exclusion exists, but we believe that this is the future. I was told 50 years ago that all people wouldn't use telephones. So that we won't be using the word digital in, in 10 years' time. We don't yeah. see we've got, we've got electric health care. Um, and, uh, yeah. and it's and it's quite good. We're not we're well, we are energy, but we're not electric as such, right? Yes. And I think that and that's the, that's the difference, and that, and that's a great point you've made there. Because what happens is there are my friends says rather than saying there's more than one way to skin a cat, that's you know, cruelty. Let's yes. say there's one way to cook chicken, right? There's more than one way to cook chicken. So you know you've had this heart attack, which I'm so happy that I'm, you're here still to have this conversation. And as you said, you've been given pills, but actually. What we what we do, what I do with my clients is, is look at the lifestyle factors yes. them to where they find themselves now so that we can look at a way to kind of reverse engineer. You know, you've got people that don't go to bed till two, three o'clock in the morning. So you talk to them about circadian rhythm. So they understand that, you know, some of the fastest ways to get sick is to lack sleep. So understand the importance of sleep and what the body does in rest and restoration. Understand the role of cortisol. Know it's your wake up hormone. Understand those things then, you know, you've got people that don't want to eat any greens whatsoever, but the body feeds itself at the cellular level with the nutrients that's in the food. So if you lack certain foods, you lack certain minerals and vitamins, you're more likely to get yourself in this position. So explain why these things are needed, as opposed to making people feel that, you know, I say to my clients, let's stop calling things that minimize our health treats. And let's start looking at treating ourselves to optimal health. And then know that you're having these other things with full awareness. Because if we change the language, we can change the way in which people see the things that will help them to be better for them, rather than saying, I'm going to treat myself to something that actually is of no nutritional value and actually helps to decrease the position that I want to find myself in 10 years down the road. But if I do it with full awareness... Now I can think about it differently because it's like, I'm going to have that burger with full awareness. I'm going to have the extra pint with full awareness. I'm aware of what I'm doing. So I've got some kind of accountability because I think what I've found in the past is that too many people will do what they want with their health because they say, it's my body, I do what I want. But then when it goes wrong, this is where they expect the NHS to step in and fix what they have broken for themselves. And this is why I think the system is so overwhelmed. Because it, it's not that we're, we're not being given the opportunity to really say, I'm going to be accountable and I'm going to help you. That Jenny, that's, that's, yeah, Jenny, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're looking for a job. I mean, I think that how terrific the way you spoke there. You always know a great deal about the issues that we're, we're dealing with. And I do think 
UK Health Radio has got a very important part to play. We need we need a radio to think of how we reach people. Now, the the issue is that what do people think is happening to them? And <clears throat> what we see is that most people are very confused, including the medical profession. Uh, they just uh, don't know about aging, lots of fitness, disease, and social factors. And I use the word social factors because it's partly aging, but also deprivation. So we need to think of a new way of reaching people. And they need to understand the facts of life. Uh, this is not, this is the birds and the bees 2.0. Not where babies come from, but, but where we're going from 50 on. And people sometimes say to me, oh, I'm, no, I'm not worried. I like to have a nice little heart attack and pop off. And I reply to them in, in Glaswegian, listen, sunshine, you're not going to have a nice little heart attack. You're going to finish up stuck in a chair, unable to get the toilet, and a bloody nuisance to your nearest and dearest. I think, actually, people don't fear cancer. People fear dementia. Mm. And Alzheimer's, we cannot do anything about at the moment, but you can reduce your risk by about 40% of dementia because Alzheimer's is the one most important cause, but it is, there are other causes. And people are also very afraid of social care. Mm -hmm. thought that they might have to sell their house and move into a care home. So uh, we need to reach people much earlier in life. <clears throat> Maybe uh, you're in your 30s and 40s, you've lots going on, but we're also looking at, the say, 55 on, when you're starting to think about pension and c financial well-being. You need to think about health well-being as well. So we see ourselves as a knowledge service. Knowledge is the enemy of disease. Clean, clear knowledge is the cl equivalent of clean, clear water in the 19th century. It should be a public health service. And we know that people look up Google and other services, but you get a huge range of resources. So what we've got is knowledge collected, stored like a reservoir, filtered, purified, and then made available. But it's not just knowledge. We've got a health assessment to help people think where they are. How have I got here? How am I in terms of physical health, in terms of my mood, in terms of what I eat? Because once you've done an assessment like that, it's a bit like having a sextant and you can find out where you are in the ocean. How have I got here? Then you decide where do I want to go and where do I not want to go? Where are there icebergs and rocks ahead? Mm. And then you need a map and a compass. And that's what we provide to help you plot your journey for the next 30 years, because the expectation of life of people who are online at 60 is about 30 years, but they haven't a clue what's happening to them. And I say neither does most of the medical profession. So that's our mission, is a health service that engages individuals. And perhaps the most important factor is that we're a community and isolation and loneliness are increasingly recognized as major health issues. The U.S. Surgeon General had just produced a big report on isolation and loneliness. So we're a community, and people get help and support from other people like them. That's one of our priorities. Amen. You know what? I tell you, I want to come and work with you guys, because this is what I've been doing for years, and I yes. specialize in pelvic health, right? Now, my mum, as I said, is bedbound, double incontinent. She has, she has dementia as well, Alzheimer's dementia. So I've seen, you know, I think... You know, for me, I said to a client the other day, the two worst things to waste in life is time and your mind. The mind is a terrible thing to waste, but it's also the worst thing to lose. The worst thing to lose to be to, you know, look at your children, but you can't remember their names. And that is it, it, it's, it's, it's really heart wrenching to watch that for yourself. As a pelvic health specialist, it's also really heart wrenching to know that my mum, as I said, she had six of us back to back and never, ever had an incontinent issue mm -hmm. until she went into hospital with lockdown. She walked in there, and she's never walked since. Yes. That was a massive issue for us. And, you know, for someone who, who could make it to the toilet the day she went in, to now have to be wearing these adult nappies all the time that we have to change, it's really hard. We have to also explain to, to, to um, clients that, you know, one adult nappy takes 400 years to, to break down. So what are we doing to the environment in those terms there if we're not willing to, as you said, acquire that knowledge and then implement it so that we don't become a burden for ourselves, for our families, for the system? 
because we know the system is broken. We know the system is struggling. So how can we help the system rather than just listening to the news telling us the NHS is not doing this, the NHS can't do that. It, you know, it only, you know, an octopus only has eight legs. We only have two arms, two legs. I've never seen a one-legged man walk. I've seen him hop. So we've got to be able to do something. We've got to come together. And the NHS is the right hand. Your system is the left hand. When the hands come together, they work really well. If we can bring things together and say, okay, the NHS is there for me. Should I be in a position like you did with a heart attack to do those extreme things? They're there. But after that, I'm there to say, right, what were the things I did that contributed to that heart attack so that I can take some of those away so I don't find myself in the same position again? so that I don't take up the bed that somebody else needs, so that I don't become this person. And as you said, it's it's not that you're just going to have a heart attack and pop off. Most people end up, because they don't look after themselves today, being quite debilitated and suffering long tomorrow. Then they become yeah. more miserable. Then they become more of a burden. Yes, uh, and Bill, <clears throat> Bill Shankler, the famous football manager, said he wanted to die healthy. Um, Richard Dahl, who discovered smoking and health, said he'd like to die young as late as possible and gave his last lecture at 92. And Her Majesty was a wonderful example to us. And what's emerging now, interestingly, is to reduce your risk of dementia, you need a bit of luck to avoid Alzheimer's, but you need to protect your brain, sleep well, manage stress, be active. Mm -hmm. You need to keep your blood vessels open and flowing, just like for protecting your heart. But then very interesting research showing that uh, it's challenge, engagement with others, positivity. These are very important factors. And crossing the left and right us. hemisphere as well. Yes. yes. Things that cross the left and right hemisphere is really important for the brain as well, isn't it? So the issue for us is creating what we call a therapeutic community. So we're not just thinking of individuals. Mm. We're thinking of individuals relating to others because we know that other people are there 24-7. And uh, one of my daughters got type 1 diabetes, but she's got a group of other people like her with type 1. And they know more about insulin pens than any clinician, uh, particularly when it comes to high-intensity exercise. And they're there 24-7 to help one another. So we see the need for a digital therapeutic community. And that's what the goal of health service is. And we're working in different parts of the country to link that to local services and local social prescribing and local work by the active partnerships of Sport England. So it's a therapeutic community helping individuals realise their potential. Amen. So, Miss I can sit and talk to you all day. <laughs> this is a subject after my own heart. I could stay here all day. But I know I can't keep you. So where can people go to get more information? Well, the, the website is www.goldster.co.uk. And if you want to get straight to the health service, slash GHS, uh, NHS is National Health Service, GHS is Goldster Health Service. But I very much hope, uh, Jenny, we can start working with Health Radio. Uh, you're oh, I'd be delighted. You're I'd very be delighted. Good I mean, I'd be delighted to do, if you wanted to do like <laughs> once a month or something to do, to highlight something, I would absolutely be delighted to be your, uh, to be your, presenter for yes, that. That'd the, be fantastic. Yeah, I think what we do need to, is to do different media and not rely on the health service. And as you said, I think what we need is a reappraisal of the role of the of the citizen. You see, if you think about it, uh, when you insure your house, you get documents sent through. You may not read them, but you get mm. documents sent through. Uh, you read them and something happens. But what do we get from the NHS about our responsibilities? Uh, nothing. Yeah. And I, I think we need a new act of parliament about the citizens' rights and responsibilities. That people need to understand that the principal contribution to their health and well-being is what they do for themselves. Mm. That when trouble happens, the NHS will be there for them for diagnosis, acute care, and to start the right treatment. But after that, they will be responsible and they can also contribute to the NHS, partially by reducing the risk of disease and, and closing that period at the end of life when they're dependent and others, but also directly helping other people through communities. But it has to be 
digital. We can't do this only by face to face. No. So digital ra- digital health radio, it's you're right on track. You are a health service. <laughs> Fantastic. We are. Thank you so much. And let me just spell out for people in case it's gold star is obviously the word gold and then it's S T E R, isn't it? That's it. Correct. Yeah. Gold stir. So gold stir. So let's just get that right. Okay. Dr. Gray, it has been absolutely amazing speaking to you. I have enjoyed every moment of it so yeah I look forward to that so let's stay connected and let's try and 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 make that because I'm I'm doing that also with a health specialist just to try and highlight these these conversations because I think a lot of the times people don't realize these things are there so we can have the awareness and then then something else comes along but to keep bringing that awareness back to the table back to the table and let people keep knowing so they start to say oh yeah there's a GHS there's a GHS rather than just the NHS then people will start to to start to look for you even more regularly. Yeah, you see, the, the way we're, we're proceeding is that um, uh, uh, this is also digital, that if a, a woman goes to see, and I've worked on pelvic uh, uh, problems, and it's the most disorganized bit of the NHS, mm. and uh, when a woman goes to see the, the GP, what does the GP know is available for her? Only the local gynecology clinic. But what we're doing is looking at how could we take the knowledge of someone like you, make it available through the Goals for Health Service, and then if the GP were to type the word incontinence or even pelvic, um, automatically the woman would receive a link to the Goals for Health Service. The GP wouldn't need to know that your service existed. Yeah. The GP wouldn't need to remember at the end of the clinic to press a button. So we have to use digital means of allowing for the fact that human beings are fallible, that the 12 minute consultation has its limitations. So uh, I'm also looking at you, and we we know where you live, um, looking at you as somebody to think, well, inside that uh, Jenny's head, there is knowledge. And there's probably today, a thousand women walking into and out of GP surgeries and maybe if they're lucky, one of them will have been told about an appropriate service like the one that you develop. But yeah. we need to think about ways we build that in to the digital health service and mean that of those women, 960, 950 are online, they would all receive a notification and an invitation to go to your website and mm-hmm. Get, get support. So we'd move from one out of a thousand to 950 out of a thousand. That's our aim. Oh, well, we're definitely connected now. Yes. For sure. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you so much. Have a blessed, it's wonderful Wednesday. Have a great day today. Thank and, you um, very yeah, much. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Great. Bye bye. Take care. Radio. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Where and and I know there's starts not, here. I, yeah, exactly. So starts if it starts, starts up there, like yeah. then that's the first. You know, the first talk is about that, and then the next one is you know a piece of nutrition, but in like a digestible bit, and that's mm. like I. So I've been a pelvic floor physio 23 years. The first decade was all about talking to the doctors, right? To to convince the doctors that they needed to give me a referral because I was still in the insurance world. And it was, I still helped thousands of people and it was, you know, rewarding in a certain way. But I switched about 10 years ago to talking to the people and training other therapists. And that was more rewarding. And then about five years ago, I switched to basically just talking to the people. And I I will still train and mentor a therapist here and there, but it is the most rewarding thing. And it's the biggest changes that I see. So like, if we, you know, have this talk, like, you know, okay, if we're going to talk to the people, great, here's the bits. And then they're going to be like, oh, what more can Jenny teach me about nutrition? I want to talk. Jenny teach me. I tell you, (laughs) honestly, I, I just love the videos. I'm just like, (laughs) <laughs> you know and the vulva puppet is really great i mean these things really make they, they you know i walk around with my with my uh pelvic floor thing because you can you can carry it you can carry it around when you go i mean i've got the big model i've got like, I have my it in my bag, birthday. but 
Exactly. Yeah, I I, I'm in a coffee shop, so I can't quite pull it out. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'll pull it out. My friend says she got on the train once with my book, Can I for January by Mercedes. What's that say, shall oh, we? So we've got one. Oh. And then this is oh, my I personal, and then this is my favorite. Ah, ah, yes, but they're things like you can leave at you know like a coffee shop and people will see that and they'll be like like yeah. would i leave something like do you pee your pants well you shouldn't like nobody would pick that up but picking something like this it's like oh that's hilarious i want to put that on my water bottle or on my car yeah oh i like know? that i like that right? yeah that's a good idea that's a really good send- idea when i send you my address you send me yours and i'll send you that's some of these fantastic <laughs> and i'll be dropping them around here. exactly yeah. yeah and, and this is the, i think like I said, I've, all these different bits of spoken word just came about. Let me see if I can find the. Let me read you the whole of. Uh, yeah, I love your spoken. I, word. I remember it, but I I, I remember it that I always sometimes mix up a bit of the middle bit. I I used it last week, last year in a, uh, as in a speech, and I'm talking um, at a bank next month, and I'm going to use the whole. I'm going to use it when I do the talk at the bank because it's just needed. You know, you've mm-hmm. got to, you've got to find a different way to give them their message. Yeah, and. Um, and then they're able to have it. I'll send you, I'll also send you, I'll send you the whole poem on them. Thank you, Jenny. On Gina, 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 Gina. Now, where is she? Velvet floor. Yeah, so that was my whole, here it is. And I, I had a character designed as well. Oh, my God, it's tragic. <laughs> <laughs> so I need, to, I need to actually get it made, because that's my character. It would really go well with that, with a revolutionary. Yeah. So, yeah. vibrantly appealing Gina, the most sought-after girl I know. The entrance to a gateway that brings love, life, and flow. Yet many underrate her and call her all kinds of names. Not understanding Gina may cause a life of hurt and shame. She's very emotional, is that Gina? She takes in everything. The hurts, the disappointments, the pains, and all the sins. Not only in the biblical sense is Gina sinned against, but in the lack of knowledge for all she has to do to ensure your health and happiness are maintained your whole life through. What makes up her character, her structure? What crowns her head? The very essence of her being many want to take to bed. She's more than sex. She's everything that defines who we are. From gait to posture and new life, her memories are as the star. Her crowning glory, her cervix, the orgasmic orgasmic collector of he, stands guard against the enemy to protect the room above or let in new life, most times created in love. Inside her wonderful womb room is where hormone conversation with the ovaries are done. And its role in brain, cardiovascular function, pelvic and spinal stability really is second to none. The seed of her youthfulness or an indicator of change. The uterus is the home with the life within Gina's homely domain. It pays to get to know her and give her what she needs. So she will always be rewarding in love, life and ecstasy. Don't be afraid to call her name or neglect to care because vibrantly appealing Gina is more vital to your health than you may be aware. Don't call her names. Call her vagina. Yeah. I love it. That is amazing. It gives yeah. me, gave me shivers. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that out. I did that, like I said, it was like I published the book in 2005 and noticed yeah. the name in 2017. Like, hold on a uh-huh. second. Yeah. Do you... Oh, do you ever like sell print? Because I would like buy a print copy and like put it on my office wall. Like I, just I need to. So I need to. So yeah. I've got that that one. You know how to keep your neckers dry. That was one. That, you know that one there. Um, yeah. I've got two on pelvic floor. My pelvic floor, something you cannot see, can either reward or debilitate me. I can choose to ignore it and not value its role. And then under the knife, I may just have to go. Extra protection I need when I laugh. <laughs> And the feeling of intimacy and memory long past. Or I can choose to acknowledge, condition and enjoy, grouping and lifting and jumping for joy. A little attention, a few moments a day, and I can confidently, continently be on my way. Oh my gosh, Jenny, those are amazing. Yes, like those. And again, it speaks to them in a way that like no one could be embarrassed or intimidated by that language it is it is Mm. beautiful it is a beautiful message and I mean it has extra power as the spoken word but like even just you know seeing that in writing you you have such a gift Jenny yeah I need to write them out and that's what I'm saying these are the things that work yeah me and you can work really well together see yeah yeah exactly and I think it's it's needed and I'm trying to what what could I want to move 
into the corporate market, right? So now I want, because rather than just doing one one, I want to move into the corporate market because I'm, yes. I'm working with women in business. So rather than helping one woman, why don't yes. I help her colleagues and help that exactly. business, help that company? Because you look yes. at performance and productivity and, and profits and we're talking menopause. Yes. Right? Because a lot of the menopause symptoms women can experience in menstruation or maternity. Mm-hmm. So if we start to just isolate those in menopause, Mm-hmm. We, we will run the risk of a lady who's got these elevated levels of stress doesn't drink enough water drinks way too much alcohol overloading her liver eating lots of heating foods experiencing hot flushes in her 20s and 30s being classified as being too young mm-hmm. to have a hot flush mm-hmm. not going through the menopause <laughs> that, actually, that was me last year and <laughs> my hot flush was started I'm like, oh. imagine they, what, what are they <laughs> yes, I'm like, where do they come from but imagine you're just in your late 20s, early 30s, and you're having these experiences. Then your colleague is, is like 45, 50, and she's having the same experience. But because she's deemed to be in the menopause, she can have different, the dispensation for her is better. She can work from home. She can come in a bit later. If she yeah. goes for a bathroom break, it's, it's kind of considered okay because she's in a certain season. So we're making the working environment more comfortable for her. What happens to the lady that's... 30 who just doesn't realize her nutritional lifestyle habits are making her act like she's over here but actually she's over here Mm -hmm. so if we can give them the education that lets them know it's you know because the menopause is the last big event to affect a woman a woman's life or her pelvic floor Mm -hmm. but menstruation is the first Mm -hmm. so we need to actually educate this woman about the impact of menstruation on the pelvic floor Mm-hmm. The impact oh, of stress and relationships on the pelvic floor, the impact of 60 million partners on the pelvic floor, the impact of a thousand different toys and trying to find the biggest one on the pelvic floor. When you've got all of that going on and you're stressing about how you look, who likes you, whatever else. I don't know if he loves me no more. My parents don't want me no more. I can't make enough money. You've got all that stuff going on. Yeah. You're in trouble. Mm-hmm. So let's look after both sets of people because mm-hmm. as much as there's lots of money lost in productivity and absenteeism in menopause I think there's more days lost in menstruation well that there is and I think it's also the quality of life and like your postpartum women and that's how you sell it so I have I think six different corporate clients right now who hold me on retainer um some are tech companies some are not that the tech mm-hmm. companies I will present you know research updates either on a very global scale or a very specific scale anywhere from once a year to four times a year other companies, um, it's one day a month. I meet with whoever in their company wants to about pregnancy um, issues, pregnancy strengthening, pregnancy questions. One other day a month about postpartum issues. And then it's every other month we meet just about general pelvic. Okay, we, who's having pee issues? Who's having poop issues? Who's having sex issues? And that's a pretty, it's a pretty significant por- a portion of my income. And it's a huge reach where anyone is welcome. And they're from an HR perspective, this is something that's amazing for these companies to be able to Good. say they offer to their people too. And it it's saves fantastic. them a lot of money. And so that's like, you know, if you're looking to get into the world, like that's how. Send me, like, some, in- send me some info on how you got yeah. in there. Because that's the bit that I want to break over here. And that's what I want to get yeah. into. Because yeah, that's, that's where obviously the bulk of my money needs to also come from because then it allows yeah. me to go out and have a bigger reach, right? Yeah. And then like yes. you said, it allows them to perform better. So mm-hmm. instead of jumping on the bandwagon, I don't know what they're doing in America, but they were jumping on the bandwagon over here. So now they're making it illegal to, to fire someone if they're going through menopause issues. Oh, really? So, yeah, so companies could lose their whole business if they try. If a woman can prove that she was, you know, uh, mistreated because of her menopause. Discriminated against, okay. Well, the thing is, that's uh-huh. such a that's such a vague thing as well. You could use anything for that, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but women get discriminated events. You know, you do find statistics of companies that are worried about women coming back after they're having their babies. And, yeah. you know, what I've said to, uh, I've spoke to a couple of men in, in powerful positions is that this is your issue. And they're like, why? Because you, you married. So I asked one guy if he's married. He said, yes. I said, okay. Can I ask you how many children you have? And he said, I have three. I said, right. Are there three separate pregnancies? Or so he said, yes. I said, okay. So let me ask you. Your wife's in a powerful position at work. She's had maternity three times. You're in a powerful position at work. Now, she's in this position. But when she had her pregnancies, I said, what was her delivery like? Was there any trauma in anything? Because, oh, my God, Jenny, of course, there were two two. C-section, one was an emergency, 
Mm-hmm. And one was a natural. I said, okay. I said, I pray that she didn't have to have any. In, he said, oh my God, mm-hmm. stitches the whole lot. I said, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. So she's had three lots of trauma in delivering that child. Let's not even talk about the pregnancy and the pregnancy experience. Mm-hmm. What she's now got to do is try to recover from the trauma of delivering the child, try to bond with the child as she might think destroyed her downstairs because she's trying to get into the outside world. So mm-hmm. she's got the emotional trauma of what it took to bring the child into the world trying to attach to the child coming into the world, trying to repair herself, you're going week one, week two, week three, four, five, six weeks now. Let's go again, right? Trying to reconnect with you. What if she has no sensory feeling? What if she's got, if it's ruined her and she's got bladder issues? She's got all of these issues going on, physical, you know, emotional, hormonal, all of this stuff going on inside of her. And then she returns to work. But she's got brain fog and she's worried about the child and she's not connecting and blah, 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 and she's not where to talk. And then so people at work are thinking, what's your problem? And now she's gone back to work and some hot totty has been doing her job for her. Mm-hmm. And that girl may be doing it really, really well. So now she goes back to work. And she's anxious that, like, oh, my God, she's taking my job from me. Yes. All of this stuff she's got to do with. And then she comes in and goes, you know what? I don't want to work no more. I can't take the pressure. Mm-hmm. Now you've got the pressure because what she was earning it's now disappeared and now you've got to do all of that for yourself so now but you're a team leader you're distracted because you know your wife's distracted and a leader distracted is a team distracted but now you're distracted and you've got all this extra pressure and suddenly you're struggling to be able to rise to the occasion to be with her so can so how can her problem not be yours Exactly. I mean, and again, there's like two, two more of our talks together, you know, one of them is like just the business part of it. And then the second part is, you know, the, the intimate effects of all that stress. So, oh my gosh, Jenny, I love this. I love Dr. Kenny. And I promise you, I promise you when I speak with her again, she will lead the conversation. I get so, so impassionate that I forget that I'm interrupting people and talking over them. I am going to learn. I'm going to put a special zip on my mouth. (laughs) <laughs> what stopped me from getting so excited and letting her share because she's got so much knowledge to share and I was sharing all of mine I just want to hear more from Dr Kelly and I know you as listeners would like to hear more from Dr Kelly too so I'm looking forward to the journey that we're going to take together as a team I'm looking forward to the journey that I'll be able to take with Professor Muir Gray as well because and being a part of that GHS, because it is really, really important that we're able to reach and have a much more global reach. And I think when it comes to female intimate health, you don't get the global reach that you need to have. I've been speaking and singing from the mountaintops for years. And I know that for such a time as this, I'm ready. The literature is there. The background is there. The connections are coming. And then when we have a platform such as UK Health Radio, that allows us to have a global reach. It means that you have access to things that you, because in many countries it's buried, but you have access to things that no longer have to be debilitating, that no longer have to be embarrassing, that no longer have to be socially isolating, no longer have to cost you your freedom of movement and take away the things that you enjoy. So you are now able to transform your life, save your relationships, live life better. You're able to do those things. So this is a way with this show of me being able to help you help yourself. Alongside people like beautiful Dr. Kelly Sardoukas, alongside wonderful Professor Muir Gray, and the platforms that we make available, it's great. Now, Professor Muir Gray is, is in this country. Dr. Kelly's in America. She's over and she's traveling around at the moment. But look at the access we have because of this thing called the Internet when it's used for good. Look at the reach that we have and the potential that's there, which is for good. Look at the way in which Dr. Kelly has been trained on pelvic health, double board certified. Very few people are double board certified in pelvic health and orthopedics. Look at my my journey through the Czech Institute talking with Paul Check, doing Paul Check's courses and understanding the body from a different perspective. And hey, presto, that's what GSS is, GHS is trying to do, bring together people that have a different approach. One that doesn't mean you get cream, medication or surgery because that doesn't teach you anything. And you have to learn. You have to understand how your body works. We don't have to but you should want to understand how your body works 
so that you're in the best position to make your body work for you because that's what you want in the end of the day. When it gets to this point here, like I said, sassy, sexy, 60, do not get me wrong because I, I might sound like I've got no issues. I do get pelvic issues, not pelvic pain. I get issues around the pelvis, the low back from my twisting, jumping, twisting, doing tennis, then sitting on a bike, riding up and down hills. But what I do is I mobilize. I mobilize myself. I look at my hydration levels. If I start to get pains in joints, then I'm thinking, am I not drinking enough water? Because water for us, as we get older, starts to diminish. When the water content in the muscles and the joints start to diminish, then it becomes a bone on bone thing. We're going to have problems. So this is why nutrition and lifestyle is so important and it's so important to have it. So I want to just put that point there in case everyone thinks you don't have any issues. Everyone has an issue of one part or another. But if we share the information as to how we overcome the issues, that makes life really good. So at the moment, I'm at my mum's house. The single bed I sleep on, the mattress is awful. I have to buy a new mattress. It, my back doesn't like it. So I've got to change that mattress for the sake of my back. But I know mobilising exercises. I'm going to do a live on Instagram today at Pelvic Secrets. You'll be able to reach that again when you when the show airs. And I'll probably do it again. And that, that live that I'm going to do is just looking at the basic squat pattern. When you wake up in the morning, try your squat. Then a few mobilizers to elongate the spine, which is in flexion most of the time when you sleep. Then try the same squat pattern and I guarantee you, you'll understand why mobilizers and opening up the body makes all the difference. But I'm coming towards the end of the show. I know my brother's going to come downstairs in a minute and that cause me stress. So I just want to remind you, you can reach me on Instagram and Twitter at Pelvic Secrets. You can send me an email, pelvicsecrets at iCloud.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook, Jenny. Jennifer minus the F-E-R, Jenny with an I, Russell. If you want to be a part of the three-day challenge starting this Monday, the 17th of July online, how to remain confidently continent and sexually satisfied, the three-day challenge, then send me an email or hit me up on Instagram or on Facebook or LinkedIn and I will send you through the link. But they will be in my bios anyway. So until next week, in pelvic floor health and happiness, stay blessed, stay well, stay healthy.